Hey everybody, Jim Lillibridge, one of the pastors here at the Urbana United Methodist Church. It's Motivational Monday. It's another Monday, and uh, so here we are together. I hope you're hanging in there. I hope you're doing okay. I hope many of you are back to work now, or almost back to work, and um, uh, I hope you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, you know, last week I said, hey, you know what? I might get out the tuba this week, but the truth of the matter is I don't have a tuba. I'd have to borrow one from the high school. I do have a euphonium or a baritone horn, and I did uh, pull that out uh, this morning, and I was going to play a jazzy version of Amazing Grace. But you know what? The valves are all frozen, and after working on them for about 10, 15 minutes, I knew it was going to take a lot more work, and I decided I didn't want to work that hard. So anyway... In lieu, though, of no euphonium, no baritone horn, no jazzy amazing grace, I'm going to tell you a neat story. pastor was out visiting uh, some of the elderly parishioners in his congregation, and uh, he came to the house of Miss Smith. So he went up to the uh, door, knocked on the door, uh, and uh, the door was open, screen door shut, and uh, he hears, come in, come in. So... He is not sure, you know, so he knocks again. Mrs. Smith, are you there? Come in, come in. So he opens the screen door, walks into the living room, cries out, Mrs. Smith. And he hears again, come in, come in. It sounded like it was coming from the kitchen. So he walked towards the kitchen. Uh, again, he said, Mrs. Smith, are you here? And he heard, come in, come in. Sure now that it was from the kitchen, the pastor walked into the kitchen, and when he walked into the kitchen, there was this ferocious German shepherd police dog type who came growling and lunging towards him, jumped him up, and pinned him against the uh, uh, wall with his paws on the shoulders, his red eyes, and showing his teeth and salivating all over the place and growling at him, um, and he was petrified, as you might imagine. And as he was trying to get his composure, he looks off to the right and he sees hanging from the ceiling a cage with a parrot in it. And he hears the parrot say, come in, come in. Seeing this, the pastor, frustrated and scared for his life, yells at the parrot and says, you stupid parrot, don't you know anything else besides come in, come in? To which the parrot said, sick him, sick him. So <laughs> I, one of my favorite stories, uh, but the moral of the story is, you know, sometimes things don't work out the way you'd hoped. Sometimes uh, life, uh, you know, hands you a lemon. Uh, and sometimes we find ourselves, you know, we go to bed one night, everything's good. We wake up the next morning, coronavirus pandemic. Sometimes things don't work out the way we'd hope. But when things don't work out, you know, we've got a choice. We can get better, we can get better. We can be angry at God, or we can draw closer to God. Um, we can get bitter and angry or frustrated and get all negative. Or, again, we can draw near to God and seek His guidance and trust that he'll lead us through the challenge. And as we do, we grow closer uh, and uh, we find our faith growing deeper as a result of putting our hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. So, you know, bitter or better, you know, lemon or lemonade. You know, if you bite a lemon, it's pretty sour. Uh, but if you use it uh, and add some sugar and you make lemonade, it's kind of tasty and nice. So, Bitter, sour, or tasty lemonade. We got a choice. Life is all about choices. And, um, you know, so what do we do when we find ourselves in a coronavirus pandemic? What do we do when things don't turn out the way we'd hope? What do we do? Well, um, in Hebrews 12, verses 2 and 3, it says this. Fix your eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sits down at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. It says, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary or lose heart. 
when we grow weary and we lose heart, what do we do? We fix our eyes on Jesus. We seek his help, his presence, his grace, his strength, his power, um, and know that he will take us through. Corey Ten Boom said once, uh, long ago, she said, you know, when you're on, on a train and the train goes into the tunnel and everything goes dark in the train, you don't throw away your ticket and jump off the train. You trust the engineer. You know that the engineer is going to take you from the darkness into the light. Uh, as we go through life, we need to trust the engineer. His name is Jesus Christ. And so we put our trust in him, uh, knowing that he'll take us out of the darkness when life doesn't go the way we'd hoped, when we find ourselves facing challenges we never dreamed we would, we trust the engineer to take us out of the darkness into the light of hope and help. And one other thing I wanted to share uh, this morning. You know, I hear a lot of time, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. Coronavirus pandemic. Everything happens for a reason. People have died from this. Everything happens for a reason. You know, that implies that God caused it in order for a greater good. That means that if a, if a little boy uh, or girl uh, is killed in a drive-by shooting, that God wanted that to happen for a greater good. Or if somebody dies of cancer, everything happens for a reason. So God wanted that to happen in order for a greater good. Well, that's, that's crazy. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. For God so loved you and me. God would never cause a pandemic. God would never cause someone to be killed by a drive-by shooting or through cancer. I mean, God allows things to happen. And in the midst of it, see, he never lets anything go to waste. So he uses everything, uses everything for greater good. That's why Romans 8, 28 says, For God works for good for those who love him who are called according to his purpose. God uses everything to draw us closer to him and to, uh, to deepen our walk with him, knowing that he will provide grace and strength equal to our every need. So one more passage for you. Isaiah uh, 43, verses 18 and 19. You know, we can get overwhelmed with what's going on, what's happening, but check this out. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I do a new thing. It springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Remember, let's not look behind us. Let's look forward. God's got this. God's got you. God's got us. And he will lead us through in new and wonderful ways as we continue our journey through this pandemic. Hey, God bless you. Uh, I love you. God loves you. I hope you're going to have an awesome week. And uh, uh you know, maybe I'll get those valves unfrozen uh, and I'll uh, play a little jingle for you next Monday. So hang in there. God bless.